Hi, I am Jenny Stafford. I'm Katie Stafford. And we are coming to you from Science by Stafford Sisters. And we have our Science Interactive Notebook um, off of these cells to show you today. Lots of really cool activities and cut, out, uh, cut and paste activities. And in the very uh, beginning of your notebook, what's nice is it sets up the school year for you. Um, so the very first page is all about me. You can um, decide if you want to give this on the first day of school that talks about um, what is the student's name, uh, what's the teacher's name, what is their favorite act, um, color, sport, things like that, just so they can kind of introduce themselves to the teacher. So you get to know them and also ask them what languages they speak. So you can also maybe use that um, in helping you seat the students as well. So it's really good to get to know your student on the first day. Okay, and then also we have the classroom rules. Um, for the classroom rules, what's nice about this is that students can always reference back to this during the school year. So if students say, oh, I didn't know that was a rule or, or they're misbehaving or anything, you can always reference back to this. Um, and another thing that Katie was going to add is the additional rules. Yeah, so in case we forgot some rules on here, you can add your own rules. Like for example, I added on, hey, no cell phones allowed in case that bothers you. So you can add any additional rules. And then, you know, it has a spot for the student to sign and the parent to sign. So you can also reference back to that in case there's any problems. Okay. And then the next part is our lab safety rules. There's uh, two different ways that you can use the lab safety to introduce into your classroom. Um, the first one is just on the front page. It, it goes over the lab rules. Um, and then we also have underneath, we have our, um, I call it the will foldable, which is in the shape of a will. And it has eight rules. You can lift the rule and then it will um, it'll tell you what the rule is and then it will give you a picture and a description. And the nice thing about this one is there is a blank template so you can change it to fit your classroom needs. And you can use both of them if you want to. You can do what we did. We um, glued the very top of our front um, lab safety um, and you can just use that to fold up and down or you can staple. Next part is our um, expectations. So this is really nice to have to inform students how you expect their notebook to look. Um, and then students will read it, they will sign, and they will date it. And then the next thing is our grading rubric. I absolutely love the grading rubric because students know from the very beginning exactly how you are going to grade them on their notebook. So you don't have students asking, you know, what do I need to do? You can always reference back to the grading rubric. And there's categories such as organization, um, completeness, appearance, and you can change your grading scale to it's, uh, it's blank to where you can add in the number that you want to. So if you want to make it out of 10, you can do that or so on. Um, and then it goes by quarters. There's first quarter, second quarter, third, and fourth quarter. Next part is um, the reflection. The reflection can be used throughout the entire year. You can use this anytime you want students to reflect upon something that they learned. Um, so for example, if I have something on my right side, some type of direct instruction or activity that my students completed and I want them to think what exactly they learned or taken away from the activity. They can fill out, um, well I ask them to write a paragraph for where it says I learned and then they also have to draw a visual and give me an example and again you can use this um, throughout the entire year. Yep. Okay. And then on the right side, we have our table of contents. Um, the table of contents is nice to have so that students can always um, look at the table of contents and if they need to find a concept or they have a certain question, um, for example, on mitosis, they can look um, up the page number. It goes by standard, title, or description, and then page number so they can look at the page and see where they need to go to uh, find their answer. And if a kid was absent, they can also look look back and say, hey, I'm missing those two. Let me fill it in. And so that's a great way for them to catch up. 
Okay, and then next part is setting goals. It is really nice for students to uh, set goals throughout the year. Um, so this first page right here is um, students deciding what they what they're going to set as their goal. Um, and there's first quarter, second, third, and fourth. So you can do this four times in the year, or you can do it more. It's up to you. But again, they are going to write what their goal is. Um, they're also going to write how they are going to achieve that goal. Um, and then this side right here, this is a look back as to did I achieve my goal and why didn't I? Is there something that I can do so that next time when I set a goal, I can achieve my goal? Okay, and then this one is, we call this our overview. Um, it's completely blank like this for a reason because um, you are going to fill it out and you can have, either you can photocopy it after you fill it out or you can project it onto the smart board or the, or, um, the whiteboard and, and um, you can uh, have students fill it out at the same time. So right here where the circle's at, you can get, write in a number. So if you wanna uh, break things up by units or, or however you wanna break it up, you can put like one right here for unit one. Um, and then you can write the title up here. Um, and then it goes over standards. You can have uh, students write in the standards. Essential questions, what are some essential questions that you are going to be um, asking yourself or learning throughout the uh, notebook for that unit? Um, and then key vocabulary words, what are some words that um, you are expected to know? Test dates, what, um, when am I going to have my pretest, post-test, or vocabulary quiz? You don't, if you don't give a pretest, you can just leave that blank. Um, and that's nice because you can write the date um, that you are going to be taking, your students are gonna be taking the test, and so students can't say, hey, I, I didn't know I was taking a test today. Um, this is nice because they can always reference, look back here, and say, well, it's in your notebook. So great way um, to hold them accountable. Exactly. <laughs> and then test scores, uh, they can write in what they got for their pretest, post-test, or vocabulary quiz. And again, if you don't do a pretest, you can just leave that blank and it's just a spot for them to be able to um, be organized and have a spot where they have their test score. And set goals. They can look back and say, hey, I didn't do so well on the first test, so this is how I do on the next test. Right. Okay. All right, and then this activity is just, it's a great intro into uh, the cells. And so you can see right here, it's talking about living versus non-living. And the biggest thing we want students to get out of this is that all living things are made up of cells. And then of course, non-living things aren't made up of cells. And so this is a great introduction into your cells. And if you can look right here, it also goes a little bit more in depth, looking at single cells versus multicellular, which you know, which types of um, organisms um, are single-celled versus which ones are multicellular. So it's a great little cutout uh, foldable that you can use. And then over here, here's just some more other activities that goes into the level of organization. So now that we know that all living things are made up of cells, how are how are these cells? What's what's the organization inside an organism? And so, of course, we'll see. We'll find out that cells are the lowest level, all the way up until eventually when we have an organism. So this is a great activity. Students can cut out, paste to um, demonstrate those levels. And then you can see right here. If you don't like that activity, you can do this activity. So we have a lot of activities that are very similar. Um, just depends on your class, your needs. You can use it to differentiate. Maybe you wanna use both. Maybe you wanna do one as a quick out the door, hey, do this foldable. Um, maybe you want it to go in the notebook. A lot of potential uh, ideas for how you can use these activities. And then over here, this is foc focusing on vocab, which is really, really important. You'll see a lot of our activities have a lot of um, vocab activities as well. So it's another cut and paste. If you don't want to put it in the notebook, do it as a, uh, you know, check for understanding, you know, before they leave or when they come in as a review for the next day. And then over here goes over the history of cells. And you can see right here, it talks about uh, how all living things, again, are made up of cells. And then right here, it talks about Robert Hooke, who is the person that discovered the cells. And it goes in a little bit more in depth. Now, you can have students do this on their own. Maybe you give them, you know, a computer and you say, hey, research about Robert Hooke and answer these questions. Or maybe instead of lecturing, you know, on the PowerPoint, maybe instead you fill out this with the students and then go have, go have them go back and color it in. 
a lot of opportunities, a lot of different ways you can do these activities we have for you. And then over here, this is just another foldable. It's on the three parts to the cell theory. And this is also another thing I don't even lecture on PowerPoint. I go through and fill this out with students and then I have them refer back and they do awesome on the quiz because it has visuals with it and they're filling it out as we go along. And the nice thing that we talked about is that these type of activities are different than just a traditional boring worksheet. Students are actually engaged when they are completing these activities um, and having a notebook like this they do take pride in it uh, with all of their coloring and, um, and if you're running out of time you can always have students color at home mm -hmm. um, but like I said students they they enjoy having something like this um, because they can always reference back when it comes to a test or, or studying for a test they can always it, it's a nice way that um, it's not just the same boring thing like I said earlier so mm -hmm. it just keeps them very engaged and sometimes you know after it's at the end of the day you gave them all these activities it's nice to let them do a little bit of color, coloring and just kind of kick back a little bit towards the end. And then also it's a great study tool to take home and it's really colorful and like she said, take pride. You know, a parent sees that and goes, whoa, what is that? Hey, that's my science interactive notebook. All right, so then you go over here and just more interactive notebook activities on cells. This talks about how cells come in all different shapes and sizes, gives the examples. This one right here talks about how we have two types of cells. Uh, we know that we have prokaryotes and eukaryotes, and you can have your students do a Venn diagram, or maybe you want them to see a side-by-side -side comparison. And this is also really great because they can see, hey, what do eukaryotes have? What do prokaryotes have? What do they both have? And they have that visual where they can literally look to see the comparison side by side. So decide what you want to use. Use both. Use only one. It's really, like I said, another great interactive notebook activity. This one says exactly the same way, except this is on eukaryote cells. So now you're looking at plant versus animal. You can also, again, see side by side. Really great activity. Then we're going to dig a little deeper, and we're going to actually do a prokaryote cell um, a uh, animal cell and a plant cell. So here's a prokaryote cell and this allows students to uh, not only see the organelles inside but also be able to open them up and read what they are with the definition. Now this is also great because you can, you know, if I have this in my notebook and she has it in her notebook, I could say, hey, what is this? And I can quiz her and I have the answers. Or you can go home and do it yourself. It's a great graphic organizer. Mm -hmm. It's really well for ELs, for any students, maybe with special needs, or just for all your students. And maybe you fill it out with them, or maybe you have a higher advanced class and you say, hey, you go online and look it up and fill it out. And like I said, here's that animal cell and plant cell, the same exact thing. And then right here, here's the organelles, but we put a little character in them. And these little organelles now have little faces, and this is great for doing metaphors. You know, a lot of times we like to say, hey, what is the mitochondria like? Compare it to something in life, and a student can look that up, or maybe they could do their own, and they could write what they think it's like. So for example, this mitochondrion, he's saying, hey, I'm like a power station that supplies energy to the factory. And then students underneath could write what the actual definition of mitochondria is. So they have that comparison uh, and it just really sticks out in their brain and it's a great another graphic organizer. Right. And kids, they, they love the characters as well. It just, it's visual. It's very visual and, and students, they, they'll remember that um, because of the visual. Um, and then the next thing we have is the animal and plant cell puzzle. So it is looking at both animal and, and plant cell and, and comparing them. Um, it is a puzzle activity. You will see um, that I have some puzzle pieces here. Students, you can have them color it um, if you want to and they will cut it out. And then it will ask um, some, um, well you'll have a, a picture right here and it'll say, well what is the name? What is going on? What's the organelle? And then here it'll say, what's the description and the function? So students will look at their puzzle pieces and they will glue those on there. You can have them working in pairs, um, working with one another. Um, and that way they can help with um, each other. Um, and then also 
here on the back page again you can tape or you can um, glue or staple the front page to the second page or you can put the front page on the left side and the the bottom page on the right side and so here is just a, there's a word bank and then you have your Venn diagram for your animal and your plant cell and then students are going to use that word bank and write inside the Venn diagram and then lastly just goes um, over down here what do animal cells lack that plant cells have so um, again it's just another representation of um, instead of the Venn diagram of what's going on so there's multiple ways to um, kind of get that point across that there's a difference between animal and plant cells and, and I want to say real quick that this uh, this activity is also great because if you don't want them to have glue in the pieces you could also laminate the pieces to use over again for the next year and if you don't want to use lamination you can also do cardstock cardstock works well it doesn't last as long as lamination but instead maybe you have that as a quick check when students come in hey what did we learn last class or maybe you have it as a ticket out the door real quick fill this out with the puzzle pieces you come around and check it and then you can reuse it again for the next class Lord, like she said glue it in put it in the notebook lots of different ways you can use this right okay and then next one right here this is uh, the plasma membrane or cell membrane and this is just looking at it a little bit more up close students will glue, uh, glue in the two different layers so they'll see that it's a phospholipid bilayer and um, I have another variation on this as well you can look and see if you like that because some students not students some teachers like to do a little bit more uh, a little bit more higher level for those advanced students but this is a little more simplified um, but you can see right here it's great activity they just cut in they can actually see that so that's pretty neat all right okay and then the next activity we have is on uh, photosynthesis and the nice thing about this one is um, there is also a blank template included to where you can change uh, the information if you want to make it more basic or more advanced you can do that um, so it is a foldable for example right here it says what is photosynthesis and why is it important and you you can have students lift that and then it answers the uh, those questions also um Another one is, uh, what do plants need to make food? You can lift down the flower petals and um, it has the information, the answers on there. The leaves also fold up. Um, we have the photosynthesis equation. The first three on the left side of the flower is the reactants. And then you'll see the two on the right side of the flower is the products. So it's just a really nice, fun, um, foldable for students so that they can remember the, um, the photosynthesis equation. And then these, this one is exactly the same thing. It's just a little different version. So you can look through and see which one you like. Same thing. It talks about, hey, what are three things needed and what two things are going to be produced at the end. And then over here, it's the same thing, except now for cellular respiration. And it has the definition of what cell respiration is and what goes in and what goes out. What's really neat about this too is that we also have a comparison of photosynthesis and cell respiration. Right. And students can use, um, for this one right here, you can have students relate back to this information and use this to help them on this activity because this is a puzzle cut and paste activity. And um, so it's not really introducing it because it, it's already been introduced it could be used more of like a quiz or just like I said an activity um, for students where students are going to cut out some puzzle pieces and the puzzle pieces will be placed according to if it goes with photosynthesis or cellular respiration um, and then the they will also write the definition of what is it so um, what is photosynthesis um, and then on the right side this is our equations and and like I said, they can use the other foldable to help them when they cut out their puzzle pieces. Um, they can use that to help them with the equation. So, for example, if I want to do the uh, photosynthesis equation, a reactant is going to be carbon dioxide. So I can take that and glue that right there. Okay, so it's just, it's a fun activity for students. They love puzzle pieces. They love putting things together. Just a nice way to get them, um, a multiple way for them to learn the uh, equations. It's They're going to be pretty much learning the equations many different ways.
And then it, this is just another different type of foldable you can look at, and it's just doing the same thing. It's just showing that comparison, how what photosynthesis gives is what cellular respiration needs to be able to do its process. Anyway, so it's great. shows you how they're connected. And then over here, this is an activity on enzymes. Now, sometimes, you know, the students get bored with us just talking, talking up with PowerPoint. This is actually a little different where I actually have students use puzzle pieces and students will actually do this process of how enzymes work and they get to use their puzzle pieces and show me and then we start filling it out and then it's also a great way I can also um, assess my students and their learning. I might say, all right, you guys, now that we've gone through this process, again, can you tell me what this is? And you know, don't say anything, just get this guy out and put the word next to him what he, what he is called. And students will look through and they'll say, oh, he's an enzyme. They'll find their paper that says he's an enzyme and they'll put this on their desk right next to it. And I'll come by and I'll say, all right, you're right. He is an enzyme, great job. And so it's great, students can walk and work in pairs. They can work the puzzle pieces. Or if I have a student comes in and we can work one-on-one, -on -one, he can pull out his puzzle pieces and we go back through it. So this is a great activity, a little different um, style of teaching. And then we uh, forgot to go over the back uh, or underneath on here also is I talked about there's multiple different ways that you can um, talk about the equations, the photosynthesis equation and cellular, uh, cellular respiration. So um, here's another way that you can introduce it as well. So there's many different options for you to use in your classroom. It's up to you. Okay. And then the next part is our um, mitosis and um, meiosis activity. Now, before I have students do this activity, I actually have them create a, another will. I told you earlier I called these wills. So I'm gonna show you these ones. Um, this is the mitosis will where the top will have the different phases. Um, and then you are going to, um, for example, the first one, I actually have the question, what is mitosis? So you can ask yourself what it is. There's a picture that shows what mitosis is and then there's also some facts about it. Um, and you can go around and see what is interphase and so on. You can quiz yourself on this. Um, the nice thing about this too is if you want students to quiz what are the different phases in order, it comes with a cover. And so you can put the cover over it and you can get, this is a paper fastener. Um, you can buy this from pretty much anywhere. And um, you can use the paper fastener and you can put it in the center of your will. And when I do this, it now allows me to go in order. So all I have to do is go clockwise from starting at what is mitosis, and I go clockwise, and then it's gonna tell me what my first phases and then I can also even ask myself I can I can lift that up look at all the information I can go oh, I wonder what the next phase is and so you can quiz yourself and move around for the next phase I also have that for um, meiosis same thing for meiosis um, pretty much I mean you lift it you're gonna see the picture you're gonna see some facts and there also is another cover page so you can put the cover page over your first phase and then you can just rotate it again um, after putting in the paper fastener you can rotate it clockwise so that you can see the next phase. I do this again first so that students can use that um, to help them on this activity. Now you can you can decide if you want to um, you can have students glue this actually in their interactive notebook or you can have them keep it as a handheld um, tool a study guide um, but I have them use that to help them actually complete the puzzle activity. This is more of reinforcing that they understand the um, what is mitosis and meiosis. So these puzzle pieces are very similar to the other ones, the animal and plant cell ones, um, and I've already glued them down, but you also are going to, ha it'll give you the name, the, the phase, and then the students are actually cutting out the um, cell um, pictures and then they are going to glue those according to what phase it is and then also the descriptions. I have another template for this 
This mitosis only has a uh, prophase, met, uh, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. And I have another template that has interphase, and so it has all the phases. So you can decide which one you want to use to fit your classroom needs. And then we also have the meiosis. Um, the meiosis, you, again, you can staple, glue, tape the front page to the bottom page, or you can have one on the left, one on the right. And so it goes over the phases, and then it also asks about the chromosomes. So what is different between mitosis and meiosis? Which you're going to see, we also have a couple other activities that um, go over these differences. Exactly. So this one right here is comparing them, and you can see right here that everything, everywhere throughout your body that I colored in, in red, this is where mitosis is happening. So this question is asking about that and, and it goes into a little bit more in depth and I talk about how it's an asexual reproduction. And then on this part right here, you can see I colored in the male's testes and the women's ovaries to show that that's actually where meiosis happens and how that's a sexual reproduction. And so anyway, so this is a great comparison tool. I always tell my students, hey, where does it happen? And then I, we also talk about diploid and haploid. So this goes into that and does that comparison for them to see. Right. And then also we have another, I like to call this like a flip book, um, so which is compares, uh, comparing mitosis and meiosis. And um, so you will hold it up. And then here are the drawings that show, here's the parent cell coming from the parent cell, what happens during mitosis, and how is that different from meiosis. And you can see here, hey, it produces two daughter ce uh, cells, versus here, we have four daughter cells. So um, it's just a nice way put side by side that students can really see the comparison of what is going on. And this would be great also, like I really like, uh, my sister has written in little extra words on top mm -hmm. of it too. So I might do this instead of doing a PowerPoint lecture. I might sit here and have them, like as I'm talking, mm -hmm. just write on this directly so they can see it. So it's just a right. different way of doing it. Right, they can fill in any important information. Again, this entire interactive notebook, you can have students add comments or um, just make it fit your needs uh, for your students. And then the next page of the flipbook is going to have the Venn diagram that has little cutouts. Your students will cut these out um, and then just glue them according to where they go. So if it's um, mitosis versus meiosis or does it happen in both. So it's just a really nice um, way for students to compare the two. And then the last thing that we have, um, I did not print it is the very last thing is um, students will have a look back of the entire year um, to where students will write what did they accomplish during the whole year. Um, what are they going to be doing next year? Uh, where are they going to be going to school? Or, you know, it just asks questions about how the school year went for them. And that's pretty much it. That's our cell bundle. Um, as you've seen, we just have so many different activities um, that will be very, very useful for your students. So keep them engaged. Um, students will love their interactive notebook. Yeah, and other than that, check out our store. We have a lot of really great products. We are constantly putting new things up. So check back if you have any questions. You know, um, just, hey, give us a holler. We appreciate it. All right. Well, thank you so much for watching our video, and we'll see you soon. Thanks. Bye. Bye. And I think we should do it again because you said science. Um, bye. Science. <laughs> bye, Steph. Oh, I said um. <laughs> oh. Let's do it real quick. Okay. Um. Here we go. I say that a lot. Okay. okay.